I would like to introduce to you Chairman F. Royce. Ladies and gentlemen, what I think gives us the greatest concern is indeed the acceleration of the, the arrests and the beatings, uh, especially of these young um, dissidents in Vietnam, the those who are involved in blogging, for, you, for example. Those who are daring to use one word, democracy, or two words, human rights. If that shows up on your blog in Vietnam, you're likely to be hauled in and if you look at the sentences, we're talking about sentences of six, seven, eight years for these young people. In the first six weeks of this year, 40 young people in Vietnam hauled in, charged, given long sentences, that is more than all of last year. When I say the acceleration of this type of tyranny, it is a very real problem. Human Rights Watch identifies this now as a country in which people do not have basic rights, not only, as we know, political rights or economic rights, but rights to freedom of religion. Rights of freedom of speech have been totally totally undermined and undercut, so much so that the re religious leaders in the Khao Dai or the religious leaders of the Venerable, uh, the Venerable Thich Quang Do, for example, who's head of the Unified uh, Buddhist Church of Vietnam, or uh, the head of the uh, Wahao Buddhists, all of them have the same concern, and that is the Communist Party is attempting to take their religious beliefs, their texts, and then rewrite that. And if they don't agree to it, then the government picks a stooge to be the representative to religion. Mm -hmm. And this, when you see the beatings, of course, of, of Pastor Chen and others, and many of you have seen the pictures, and from July 3rd, I just brought a picture in from the head of the cow died. Now this is the beating he just suffered. One of the individuals who I had met with was in the Wahau. Uh, leader of the Wahau Buddhists, he was subsequently beaten with a pipe so bad that uh, I don't think he can carry on a conversation today. Now, it is not traditionally the role of the United States to be quiet when these types of human rights abuses are occurring, especially when we had a deal with the government of Vietnam that they would make progress on human rights. So our question is this. Thursday, during this meeting, will the President of the United States lean across the table and say to President Sang, say, Mr. President, will you release these political dissidents? You want a closer relationship with the United States. Will you release these young bloggers? Will you release these young artists that have done no more than write a song protesting the treatment of those who are beaten when they speak out? Are you ready to acknowledge and take that action? Because as president, the president of Vietnam can take that action, and he should be taking that action. And it's the responsibility of this president to raise this issue, because for too long we have downgraded this to a lower and lower and lower a level. From the Secretary of State all the way down, I wouldn't be surprised if it's only interns now that bring up the issue, right? <laughs> we want the issue brought up by the President of the United States. We want it brought up on Thursday. We want And, you know, speaking on behalf of what has happened to the Catholic community in Da Nang, beaten recently with prods, with electric batons, the same things happened to the Protestants, to every religious group that dares speak out, let's have a repeal of Section 79 and Section 88 of the Criminal Code in which people are hauled in and we have these show trials, and then the, that's the last we see them for eight years. Let's have some modicum of decency and justice and recognition of human rights for the people of Vietnam. Thank you.